So welcome. I'm Tori. I'm Brooke. And we wanted to start this podcast to bring awareness to a lot of topics. I feel like in church and just in life in general, get swept under the rug. Um, so this is, you know, it's going to be great. Um, some of the topics will be a little bit heavier than others. There will be some that are super deep, super, um, you know, in detailed. But I feel like since things, there are things that aren't talked about enough, um, especially in today's society, that people are scared. I mean, some of them, they don't want to open up. They don't want to share what they've gone through. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know about you, but I was in a position growing up to where I just kept quiet. Oh, I didn't say I anything mean, for a long time. No. Because it's, it's just you, when things like that happen in your life, you feel very isolated. Yeah. Even though there's several people around you probably going through the same exact thing. Yeah. But you're like, nope, it's just me. There's yeah. something wrong with me. Something. Or so, if you feel like you were going to reach out or, you know, come to a parent or somebody that you would trust, they kind of swept it under the rug mm -hmm. and it wasn't a big deal. And so deep down inside, you were like, okay, I guess it's not a big deal until you get older and you start realizing, no, oh, that, that's a, that's a real big deal. That's a real big deal. And, and it affects you. And there is something that can be done about it. And so that's the whole point of this is to show that like, no matter what you walk through or what stage you walk through, <clears throat> that God can redeem every single bit of it. Yeah. And he's there with you through mm -hmm. everything, even in the darkest of times. And you think I'm by myself, he's there. Mm -hmm. And he's guiding you through it and he's helping you through it to basically pull you from that. Yeah. And obviously, you know, try to get you back on the path that you're supposed to be on. Mm -hmm. I had a lot, a lot of redirections throughout my life, but every time I would be like going this way, guys, like, nope, nope, nope. Get you right <laughs> yeah, over here. Nope. Let's try this again. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> round two. <laughs> stop doing that. You know, that's bad. Like go this way. And it, Sometimes whenever you go through like that heavy stuff, it's like your mind's fixated on it and you're like, well, this mm -hmm. is what I'm supposed to do. Or it feels good in the moment, but later on you're like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I mean, yeah. that was a bad choice or a bad decision to make. Yeah. So I think a lot of the topics we're going to cover is, you know, childhood trauma, um, abuse, whether yeah, it's physical, yeah. emotional sexual, um, <laughs> divorce, loss, um, blended families, blended families. That's a big one. Um, and it's that's, a, that's really what started this whole process. Yes. <laughs> it's because I remember, um, I remember like trying to find material on like blended families and there's, there's like, not nothing. Mm -mm. No, it's like, nobody wants to talk about this subject. Nobody no. wants to like help us. <laughs> well, yeah. And I feel like, especially, I mean, we're in 2024. It's like, I feel like if you don't know somebody that has a blended family, it, that's like not normal, I guess you could say, but like you definitely live out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> right. But I'm just kind of like, it's everywhere. And so you're just kind of like, well, I mean, I feel like a lot of people have gone through divorce and it's hard. I mean, it's tough. I mean, not, yeah. just, I mean, just for you, but like, the kids that are involved. I mean, families involved, there's friends involved. And so everything it's hard on you, but then when there's stuff in the mix of just, you know, divorce exes, obviously that aren't, you can't co-parent with, I mean, that's another factor that you've got to put into it. Yeah. So, I mean, just talking about that and obviously us going through that because we've both mm -hmm. been through divorce. Um, we had kids, with our ex and so we're both remarried mm -hmm. happily married and so it's just kind of going through that process and then kind of going and not reliving you know like childhood trauma but it's like going through that with your now partner or you know your significant other oh, yeah. and it's just kind of like okay well i mean this did happen whenever i was married like are you gonna do that type of thing it's yeah. just there's a lot that goes into it and it's like a lot of people don't talk about it and it, it definitely starts from the beginning so and one of the things i was talking you know to you about was like okay what kind of scripture kind of like 
mm-hmm. encompasses like all this. Touches everything. Yeah. And I literally, you know, the Lord pointed me to the the book of Esther and it's like, perhaps you're called for such a time as this. And I think that's the biggest thing that the enemy tries to do oh, is yeah. like you have all these failed relationships, um, people that have hurt you that you're close with. And it makes you feel like you're not worthy to do what you were called to do. And I just, that's the scripture that the Lord pointed me to is Esther 414, you know, yeah. where you are called for such a time as this. Yeah. There's, you know, God chose you for your kids for a reason. Right. And so just to kind of dive into our backgrounds, I grew up um, in a ministry family. Um, my grandparents are missionaries. Uh, in Mexico, they moved down there when my mom was 18 months old. Um, so that's why everybody makes a joke. I am very white, but I speak Spanish fluently. <laughs> so people at church always get confused because like, I'll do an announcement in Spanish. I lead worship in Spanish. And they're like, they're like I'm wait. sorry, what? <laughs> what are you? Yeah. I, I'm white, but I just speak Spanish because my mom and her siblings grew up there. My mom's mm-hmm. younger sister was born in Mexico. Yeah. So they went to school over there, whole nine yards. So, um, Growing up kind of at the forefront of ministry, there was uh, my parents, no matter what church we were at, um, they were always heavily involved. Like when I was, we moved to Dallas when I was seven. So before then we lived in Fairfield and my parents did worship. They did youth ministry. They they did did kids ministry, like all the things. And we moved to Dallas and, um, which I'll, I'll cover that story later because I don't want to take up all the time, but just even, you know, our connection, you know, with pastor Mike, when we came here, we started coming to the church here in 97, um, right after my dad's dad had passed away. And, um, growing up in the church, you know, my parents were just immediately heavily involved the entire time they were here, you know, God called them to move back to Houston about eight years ago. And I'm still here. (laughs) It's still involved. But when you grow up in that kind of position, it's like, well, they're people of faith. So nothing bad ever happens to them. It's not going to happen to you. Right. Yeah. There's this, you're, you're, you know, and people are like, well, if you have that much faith and you're covered by the blood, nothing's going to happen to you. And I'm like, Mm. My life like, was I a very. Like if more, you're gonna be attacked more. I mean, I yeah. I, mean, I remember. That's just, yeah. My nana used to say all the time. She said, "Why would the enemy mess with someone that's not doing anything to further the kingdom of God?" Mm-hmm. And not that that puts a target on your back, but the scripture talks about that. No, it does. Yeah. And so I remember growing up, like at church, I had to have this this mask because my childhood trauma started at. 10 years old. And, you know, I went through, it was, I was almost 11. So let's say it was like 11 to 16. Yeah. So it's like five years of sexual abuse that happened while we're in ministry, while we're doing missions trips, while leading worship, while, you know, doing all these different things. And I told no one, no one, because I was like, one, so confused as to why it happened. Well, yeah. Because that was not like well, I didn't even know child. what that was. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. You shouldn't know what that is, especially at that young of an age. I mean, nobody should. Um, but yeah, and then it's like you're involved with all this church. I mean, you're involved with church, and you're just kind of like, well, and it's like you what? feel like you can't talk about that in church because no. nobody else does, right? So it's like, oh, they're gonna think something's wrong with me. Like, I literally remember as a kid thinking like what did I do? Like, where did I mess up with God that he allowed this to happen? And one of the moments in my life that was really, really pivotal, not in a good way, but uh, the summer of 2007, Dr. Rodney Howard Brown came to our church and it was the summer I turned 16, getting ready to go into my junior year. Well, two weeks prior to that was the last time that I had been hurt by this person. And... During that week, I mean, we were witnessing the people at the dark station in Dallas. We were going into hospitals, praying for people. Well, there was this one night in the middle of the week. And I was at this point in my life where, like, I learned how to play church really well. Like, oh, I'm so-and-so's daughter. I can do this, this, yeah, and this in front you of you. Front. Yeah. Totally different person at home. Like, even at 16. Yeah. Which is, <laughs> it's so bad. But, like, when you go through that kind of stuff, you know who to be when you're around certain people. Right. And so 
I was that kid having to sit on the front row with their parents and you've got a minister there every time he would walk past us. I've never taken so many notes in my entire life. Like I refuse. I was like, don't make eye contact. Don't make eye contact. If you don't make eye contact, he won't like try on you or whatever. Yeah, yeah. He won't pray for you. Yeah. Didn't work because every time he walked by me, I was just like hot. It was, yeah. I could just feel the presence of God. So the only thing I remember from that night is him calling me out. The next day I go to youth because we, so that means it was a Tuesday because Wednesday night church. Yeah. So we're having the youth service and everything. And they're like talking about all these people I prayed for. Literally no recollection. I was just under the power of God. Like I had no clue what was going on. And I have adults talking to me, some of the youth. And they're like, oh, you prayed for such and such. Like you prayed, you prayed for this person in my family. And they totally felt the power of God in their home. And I'm like. I'm sitting there like, You're like I did. Sure, I did. Sure. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, right. But it was like, the more people talked about it, I am an immature 16 year old. So I'm sitting there thinking like, God's screwing with me. Right. Like I didn't have the spiritual maturity to understand that that was God showing me like, yes, that person did this 14 days ago, but this is who you are. This right. is who I've called you to be. Right. And this is I, what you can do. I took it as, God's only going to use me when he wants to. And then he's just going to leave me to the wind. Like, just kind of let me survive on my own. Mm -hmm. And when he needs me, then he'll use me to help his people. Right. And that set me down for the next five years on a horrible, horrible path. Yeah. So I ended up being in college and getting suspended from a private school (laughs) because I was so broken in one wrong relationship after another. You can't sleep with people in private school. Mm -mm. Um, Shame on you. But I was, I know, right? I like was so lost and didn't know who I was that it just, I destroyed myself. Like literally destroyed myself. Like, and it's sad too, because I played basketball at school there yeah. and like could have finished out the whole four years. And Julianne's older now. And she asked me, she's like, well, why didn't you finish playing basketball there? I'm like, well, honey, I, I, I tell her I the same thing. My mom path. used to say this all the time when she would teach. My talent took me where my character couldn't keep me. Yeah. And I just, I was destroyed. I was in this very destructive pattern and I, I literally, there was this moment where I just couldn't hold it in anymore. And my parents knew something was wrong. I developed an eating disorder and then I'm doing all these crazy workouts. My body was thrown off. I end up in the hospital. Don't tell my parents, but wasn't stupid enough not to put it on our family insurance. (laughs) So they got the bill. Oh my gosh. Like your explanation of benefits (laughs) come back. Right. (laughs) And you're like, I literally, when you talk about dumb teenager, like, well, because you don't think about that. I could be the face of it. And so they call me back to the house, set me down, and I just exploded. It was like, Every, like everything, like more vomit, just it all came out. And I tell him everything that happened to me as a kid. And then I tell him about this relationship that I was in in college and what happened. And the look on their faces was honestly like, your parents know. They do know to a certain extent. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're not dumb. They're not dumb. But there's only, when you're 19 years old, there's only so much they can take away from you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you're, at this point, you're 19, like yeah. grow up. Yeah. Not that you're a full grown adult, but like, there's just certain things that they you're just there didn't to wear. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember I just told them everything, everything. And this is a f- <laughs> kind of makes me sad. That was the first time I ever saw my father cry. Yeah. The very first time. And you know, I didn't know until after all that had come out, the type of environment that my dad grew up in. Right. I, you know, I knew his family wasn't like ministry, like my mom's, but from what I remember, I remember going to church with them, you know, like there were a few like cuss words and drinks at Christmas, but there wasn't like, like, to me, it wasn't (laughs) like, I didn't know the gravity of what honestly kind of like hell my dad grew up in. And I remember him just saying, he just said, my God, I thought I got you out. And I was just like, I literally looked at him like, got me out of what? And that's when that true, literally like the open door to where I really started to heal. Now I still had a long ways to go. Oh, it was still, Um, I mean, it's ongoing. I feel like it doesn't stop. Oh yeah. Cause I literally, by the next year, (laughs) it was a bug in my face. You might want to edit that out. (laughs) Um, 
I literally <clears throat> by the next year was pregnant with my oldest. Yeah. So there wasn't like the healing had started, but it wasn't enough to where there weren't some of those old ideas, old thought patterns oh, yeah, and old yeah. habits. And I feel like even now there's still old habits that sometimes mm-hmm. like I'll even like slip up and like do something. And I'm like, Brooke, like <laughs> that's you've the been going me. to therapy. Like, what did we just talk about in session last week? And <laughs> I mean, I'm just kind of like, Brooke, get it together. You know, like you think, oh, I'm an adult. I've got kids. Yeah. I work. You think that everybody has their life together. No, we still make mistakes. There's still slip ups. I yeah. mean, it's, it's a work in progress every single day. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, mine kind of started literally from the beginning. I was three years old and my dad died mm-hmm. and he was a pilot. It was a plane crash. And um, my mom got um, a huge settlement because it was a, it was the company's fault with the plane crash. It was a faulty oh, wow. part. Um, and so, I mean, she it was millions of dollars and we were in Louisville at the time. And it was like from that moment, like once he had died, you know, cause I was three, I didn't really like remember all of it. I mean, there was bits and pieces that still kind of like hit me in waves. Um, but like we moved to Roy city when I was four or five. I mean, it was like right out of the gate. I mean, like he Those died when I was three location. and it was like, all right, here's where the cycle kind of starts. And it was, I know I was like, sorry, mom, but I mean, like, this is how it is. But um, it was guy after guy after guy. I mean, whether she was getting married or she had live-in boyfriends. And it was like growing up, I mean, it's like, especially I feel like as a girl, Mm -hmm. you look for that male figure. I mean, that's like your dad. The validation. Yeah. And I never had that. And so from, I mean, just a very young age, I was always kind of like craving that male attention. Mm -hmm. And it's like there would come a guy and I'd kind of start getting used to him. Then he'd go. And then here comes another one. And so it was just a constant cycle. And I'm just kind of like, okay, like, what do I do? You know, like, do I just kind of stand here? I mean, like, I just didn't know how to operate at that time. And, you know, I had brothers, you know, they're, you know, they're half brothers because they were from different guys. And like, I have an older brother. We were from the same dad. Mm -hmm. Um, But like, we don't even have a relationship because of stuff. And obviously that will be later on. But it's like, because of stuff growing up, it's like, he's not a brother. And so it's like sharing a dad with somebody that you don't have a relationship with, like that hurts, you know, because I couldn't imagine like my kids, you know, they're brothers and like, they don't have a relationship growing up. Especially because you were so young. Oh yeah. Yeah. But it was just like, you know, guy after guy. And then it was just, you know, growing up once I kind of hit that, like, puberty stage, Mm -hmm. I was just like, oh, okay, well maybe if I can find a guy to give me attention, that's where I'll get my validation from. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not kidding from 13 on, it was boyfriend after boyfriend hooking up, trying to get something to kind of like awaken me because I just felt numb. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I was good enough. I felt like I was always just kind of like pushed to the side and it was just kind of like, you can figure it out, you know? Um, And there was just, I mean, there was just a lot of stuff in between that things happened and it was rough. And then I got pregnant at 18 and then I got married shortly after that. And then things happened in that marriage, had two other kids, you know, went to school. There's so much stuff that goes on just in between the years that you're just kind of like, whoa, Mm -hmm. like, how did I get from here to here? You don't realize how much time has passed when you're in survival mode. No. Like years. No. Like I remember it was, you know, we'll get into more of that side of, of life. Yeah. You know, oh yeah. There's later, but so it much was just, I remember I was about to turn 30 and I just woke up and I'm like, where did the past nine and a half years go? Like mm-hmm. what just happened? Oh yeah. Cause I mean, Ryder's about to be 11, like next week. And I'm like, you were just born. Mm-hmm. 
and so much has happened. And so it's just, it's crazy time frame and things that like we've gone through that sometimes you just kind of sit there and you're like, how did I make it through? Mm -hmm. And it, it, it just boils down to it's God. It is. And, and that's one of the things where like, cause I've had conversations with people and they're like trying to argue faith with me and talk about stuff. And they're like, why don't you question this? I'm like, because of everything that I've been through since I was a child, I should not be here. Mm -mm. I should have died. I should have overdosed. Like I, I should have, yeah. like there was so many things that I should have not woken up from. Mm -hmm. And I just, I shouldn't be here, but I am. Like I got into an accident mm -hmm. at 28 and I should have died. Yeah. Like it, it was bad. And at that point in my life, I had given up mm -hmm. still playing the whole church thing. Cause that didn't stop. <laughs> like and it never stops. It, it, doesn't <laughs> it doesn't stop. stop. No, it doesn't stop. And until you wake up and realize it's a heart thing. It's God is all about the matters of the heart. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care what you look like, no. what mask you put on for the day. He wants what's inside. Yeah. And it wasn't until I realized, like, if I don't fix these heart issues, my kids are going to go through the same thing that I went through. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not having that happen. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I, I, I refuse like a, to let that be their life. It's not going to happen. Not an if and or but. It's not going to happen. No. And that's when you start breaking the cycle. Well, not that they won't go through things. Well, no, but not. But it doesn't have to be at to the same extent. severity. Yeah, yeah. Like, it it just doesn't. Like, I, I mean, my kids get mad at me all the time. Why can't I go to the bathroom by myself? I'm like, because mm -hmm. it's 2024. Yeah. No. Absolutely not. Like, there's just certain things that I could do in the 90s that you cannot do today. No. And, like, I'm not going to apologize for that. No. Because I, I love you with all my heart. I'm not your best friend. I'm your parent. Right. And so, but I, I, I remember... It was after that accident that I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, I mean, do you want this to be your life where like your kids could wake up and not have you? Or, you know, I, I just got to a point where I was like, okay, God, what do I do now? Because I, I can't do this on my own because I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to live like this. Yeah. It's not worth it to me. No. And I just remember I, um, it's just one of those moments like you can't really I remember being in counseling. She's like, well, everybody has their light bulb moment. I'm like, what the heck is that? Like, can you just give me the answers? I'm paying you one hundred and twenty dollars an hour. Like, just tell me what to do. And can you tell me when that light bulb comes off, because I don't know. <laughs> I know. I remember I had this counselor one time. She's like, wow, you're a little spicy today. And I was like, sorry. Have like, you, no, this is have you every heard? day. I know. But I'm just like, just today. It's you all day, every day. <laughs> I'm like, you heard my story. Like, yeah. yes, I'm spicy. I'm mad. Yeah. Like <laughs> it was one of those things. That's why I'm here to get all this out. But she said that to me and I was just like, oh, maybe I do need to like pull it back a little bit. Turn it back. Um, but I had that moment and it was right before I turned 30. And I was like, I don't want to get to 40 and still, still feel like doing, this. Yeah. Cause this is awful. Yeah. And I don't want my kids to think that this is how life should be. Right. And it's not that we don't go through things, but when you really let God have full reign, because I remember my mom used to tell me all the time, she's like, counseling's great, but there's only so much a counselor can do. Oh, yeah. Like true transformation comes from you allowing God and the Holy Spirit to touch those deep parts that you don't want people to see. Right. Because he's the only one that can actually fix it. Oh yeah. Cause I remember as a teenager, there were so many things that I was so ashamed of that I told no one, I wouldn't even tell my counselor, but God knew it's not like he closed his eyes for a second. Like you have your moment. I'm going to go over here and focus on somebody else. Like he knows. Oh yeah. And he still chose me. Yeah. And, well, and he still chooses you still every daily. Day. Yeah. And I mean, talk about stepping into a right relationship where your person actually loves you that way. You all, it is almost harder to be <laughs> in a healthy really? relationship because you're like, you, you almost sometimes like, I remember my, my house. I was like, why did you just believe that I love you? And I'm like, cause I don't know. No, I'm like, Britain I don't still have asks a... me to this day. He's like, why do you always question like everything that I say? Like literally last night he said something and I was just kind of like, mm. did and he, he was really, like, why did you, why are you questioning that? Like I'm literally saying something and you're over here in your mind doing 20 different scenarios of what it could have been. And it's not even one of those. Yeah. And I'm like, 
because of how I grew up. <laughs> it was just like, this no. is just, I mean, it's hard to like, you I have, have to like rewire, rewire your brain, your brain like, and people sometimes think that it happens overnight and it does not. I mean, mm -hmm. I started counseling a year and a half, almost two years ago. I mean, after I was about to dive down deep into the deep end mm -hmm. and just, just nix it all. Just be done. Oh yeah. I mean, like it was bad. And that's where my kind of light bulb was. Yeah. It was kind of like, Brooke, like you have three kids and a husband, like some like people who actually love you. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Go get help. Go back to church. And that's you. And I'm like, oh, OK. When you have those moments, because like, I remember it. thinking like. You know, I so took for granted. The atmosphere that I was growing up in. Because my parents are not perfect, but they did everything they possibly could to redirect and set new healthy boundaries and break those generational curses. Right. And that's, that was uh, you. Here oh. I am. And I'm like, hey, mom, like, hey, somebody. And it was like nobody. And so like when mm -hmm. you're in that by yourself, it's like a whole other world. But because that just shows you it doesn't nobody's immune from right, trials like right, nobody's immune from right it. like you can have family around you that who push you and like say hey like we need to go this way mm -hmm. like you're you're not going the right way we need to bring you back in yeah like reel you back in and then there's people who go through it alone and they don't have people to reach out to because i didn't and even if i when i did try to reach out it was like that didn't happen and i'm like what do you mean? What do you mean? Yeah, like, what do you mean happened. it didn't happen? Yeah. No, you're right. I'm just making all this up because I want attention. Yeah. And, and I'm like, like oh, okay. Who wants that kind of attention? I had that said to me <laughs> by a family member because when it all came out, I mean, my, um, most people think my dad is like very reserved, very like, but you mess with one of his kids. He's a whole nother person. And so like i have to tell this one funny story hopefully dad don't be mad but like i was this was like maybe six months after this had all come out and i was going to a job with my dad and we're on the airplane and this dude is blasted out of his mind like he's so drunk like it's 9 a.m and he had been at the bar for a while mm. well he starts hitting on me mm. my dad was so unglued he broke the seatbelt on his chair and like almost took the guy out and the guy's brother was behind. he's like i'm so sorry he's going through a lot we're headed home to a funeral and my dad was like, that's no excuse. That's my daughter. Yeah, like I'm being and protective. I was like, I'm over here sitting. I'm sitting there thinking like, this is my life now. Yeah. Like, you know, I was just so blunt. I had never seen my dad blow up like that. Yeah. He broke the seatbelt. And I'm like, because my dad's not a small guy. But and my brother's over there. So he's like, <laughs> he thought See, it was that's, hilarious. So that's, and me, I'm just like, that's me in Ugh. my marriage. I am super protective of my husband. Like, and I think everybody knows that or at least people oh, that we we've know. been up we know so. if you know brooke you know <laughs> like don't don't look at him don't don't talk don't to him. <laughs> talk to him don't touch him i will come unglued and we were it was funny because we were in ohio i think it was like two years ago because that's where he's from and so his family's up there and we were up there for christmas and it was just him and i we didn't take the kids and um we were at like this like bowling area and his third grade girlfriend came around. <laughs> no, no, it was a wedding party that was there. And this girl <laughs> just asked how tall he was. Brooke. I lost it. <laughs> Completely came unglued. And he's like dragging me back. And I'm like, no, like, that's my husband. Don't look at him. Don't talk to him. I don't even know who you are. And like, it was us two, one of his buddies, mm -hmm. and then a party of 12 in this wedding party and then like 12 security guards. And I'm literally <laughs> having to like, we're all being yanked across because it was just like, we were, we were, it, it, I exploded. But everybody. I think that comes from, you know, when you do get that person that, and that's that values it, you, you're like, you, it's like I'm latching onto mm -hmm. him and it's like, I'm like, kind of like an obsession. Yeah, I'm sorry, but it is. But like, it I'm is. But when you've gone, husband. when you've gone like, through, when that through all that, and it's like you're afraid of that loss, right? And like, I went through people rejecting me all the time, mm -hmm. especially it was males. And so it's like once I had somebody that actually loved me, and it's like gave me that correct loving attention, even though I kind of questioned it because I'm like, this is too good Can't to be, be true. Real. Like you're yeah. about, you're about to leave me, 
it's like I became like fixated on it. And it's like, no, that I'm territorial. Like that is mine. And you're not going to take that away from me because now I actually have it. Mm -hmm. And it's like explaining that to people. They're like, no, I think you're just crazy. And I'm like, yeah. Like, no, if you only knew. Like, and I, mean, I think that's I where. Am, but there's, it's a lot of backstory that people just, like, don't understand. And I think it's because it's not talked about. No. Because nobody. And that's why we're here. <laughs> it's because we're no, talking about it. Nobody, nobody, you know. And it's not, like, people in the church. It's not their fault. It's just. No. It's just not something that. And honestly, it makes people uncomfortable. It really does. And I, because re I remember the first time I told my testimony on a missions trip. We came home and my testimony was repeated um, from the pulpit and I didn't know. Oh. Like, I, I, I'm just sitting there and it gets repeated. Like, not like in super detail. Well, no, but you're just kind of like. But you're immediately like, that was the first time I had ever told people that were not my parents. And I was comfortable doing it because we were in another country. Right. Like, you know, you know I, I had no problem really sharing my story. Again. Yeah. And I remember sitting there and I so many people came up to me after service and they meant well, but it's almost like they didn't know. Oh, I'm so sorry. You went through it. Well, I had no idea your family's this and this. And I'm like, yeah, there's a reason I never said anything. So yeah. it's like, it took me getting to say my age 33 to finally be comfortable enough to talk about it because I, I don't want to see other people walk through the same stuff that I did because it's awful. It hurts. And there's just, if I can help one person, yeah. then I'm going to help then one I feel person. Like, yeah, I feel yeah. like I did my like job. I mean, I feel like it's kind of like a job to me. Like mm -hmm. if I, if you come to me and it's like, I've been in that similar like situation and I'm literally telling you like, don't, don't do that because this it's is I've it's going it. to lead to this. And yeah. then this is going to lead to this. It's because I've already done it. And and did it at a young age. Did it at a young age. Oh a very young age. And which I'm not, you know, glad to admit, but it happened. I mean, there's nothing, I can't yeah. go backwards. And so it's like, if I can tell somebody like, don't do this, or that's not a good situation to put yourself in because mm -hmm. either you're going to get hurt, you know, you're going to have a lot of trauma growing up from that. It's like, I'm trying to help you. So just listen. Yeah. Just listen just a little bit. And I had one person, I mean, and this is someone that I kind of had shared the same information with them over and over again, and they were still kind of doing their own thing. It was mm -hmm. almost like they just wanted to talk about the problems. Right. Which is fine. Right. But you can pay somebody to do that. Like, don't ask me for the same, info, like the same help 17 it's, times. It's 120 an hour. Right. Um, but I remember, you know, just kind of going, kind of going over and over the same thing. And... I just got to a point where it was like, you can tell when someone's wanting the help or not. And I just got to the point where like, I don't know if this is true for you, mm -hmm. but I remember asking my counselor one time, I'm like, why is it that I can walk in a room and I immediately know who's been hurt the same way that I have? Oh, been? no. Yeah. Is it not like, oh, yeah. I thought I was crazy. Oh, no. You can, can just you can tell it. It's you a heaviness. It on, yeah. It's like the way that they carry themselves, like their whole like demeanor. Um, and it's just like in their face, like you can just, you can look at them and be like, they went, they've gone through something yeah. or they're going through and something. And it's not like because currently. they're sitting there all depressed. No, 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 it's, it's like, you just that. see it. Like I, I remember, um, my husband and I, we went to eat at this place over in, uh, Plano and this was maybe two years ago now. And, um, there was this, uh, girl there. I don't know what the relationship was, but she's sitting there with a guy. And she's like looking at all the doors mm -hmm. and all the exits and yeah. all like, and he's like, why is she so fidgety? And I'm like, she's making sure she has an out. Yeah. Whether she's it's because she's exit. uncomfortable with that guy or she's making sure she's aware of who's about to walk in. Yeah. Oh, and that's what I do. Like if we go out in public and like we go to like a restaurant or anything, mm -hmm. I have to be facing the crowd. Oh yeah. My no, I, will I not have be to, to no, I have to, because it, it freaks me out because there was a situation, which obviously we'll talk later on, but it's like, it puts me into that perspective, perspective of like, don't be vulnerable to something happening mm -hmm. like, to you, like yet again. And so like, like you know, know what, go, I'm like, oh, Brittany, you better just scoot over. Like I'm, I'm getting right here in this eyesight. Like, yeah, no. And so, but I mean, he's kind of the same way. So it's kind of hard because he's like, you know, the protector, nobody's going to touch her. I know. Kind of, I yeah. was the same way too, but I'm just like, 
But yeah, I mean, like, can, can, I, can like, you still move? I want to see the exit. Like, <laughs> yeah, like there's I, I went to the park with a friend of mine and it's one in Rockwall completely fenced in. Yeah. But I would not sit down on the bench with her. I'm like talking to her, but staring at my kids. And, well, and then she's he's like, like, look at all the safe. people around you. And I'm you. like, yeah. So you know that person? Mm-hmm. Like, what's his credit score? Like, not not being like, like, do you know them to where you know that if you turned your head for Nothing's a second, they happen. wouldn't just run off? Yeah. I don't care if it's fenced. Like, and I told her, I was like, if you want to go to the park with me, you have to learn to talk to the side of my face because I'm going to be watching my kids. I can't just like sit back and not know where they are. Mm. And I... I don't think that's a bad thing. I do think there are times where I need to like just calm it, breathe. Just calm like it down. you're not in survival mode anymore. Everybody's good. Yeah, but I feel like I'm in survival mode every single day. No, I know. I'm like, oh, what now? You know, like <laughs> I need to have this guard up, like because something's gonna happen. But you don't, and that's where I you know. have to get back to realize, like, and see, this is where we're talking about. We're still dealing with stuff. Yeah, even though that we're talking about no, it, it doesn't it, just because no, no, no. you start healing. It doesn't mean it just ends. It. it goes away no like you learn how to and i forget the scripture the exact point where it's at in the bible but it talks about you know my yoke is easy and my burden is light i heard a message by christine kane was at a conference and she had like the actual display of what a yoke is Mm -hmm. as a kid literally thought they were talking about eggs i'm like this makes no sense this is stupid like the amount of you want to hear something funny just to kind of lighten this up a little bit when i was a kid I thought the ushers took the offering to a back room. And you know, like at the bank where it does the tubes. I literally. You I thought they just like stuck I it up there? I thought they stepped on there and like shot it up into the sky and the angels grabbed it. Like the imagination I had as a kid. That's what they do. Shh. I know. <laughs> you're not supposed to tell anybody. God. But um, I, as a kid, that's what I thought. So when she was explaining it, when farmers are doing that process, they always put a seasoned ox with the calf. They never put two little ones or two big ones. Right. And they do it to train. So the main ox that has been doing it for a while is the one carrying the heavy yoke and it's training the other one, but it never feels the burden of it. Oh. It's just learning to plow with it. And so when she made that explanation, I was like, like oh. oh, it's not an egg. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. Um, it, it really made me understand like, okay, the yoke is still there. But, but Jesus is going to carry the main of it. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so when I had that understanding it, cause I, I had this unrealistic, like once I started the healing process, I'm like, Oh, everything's going to go away. It's going to be butterflies. I did what I was supposed to. Now God's going to fix all of it. Mm-hmm. No, that's not what happens. No, it's not. And, but understanding that scripture and how that was explained, um, which props to Christine Kane changed my world. And that was probably like five minutes of her entire message, but that's what stuck out. That's what, yeah, that's what grabbed you. And I just from that moment on had the realization that um, it doesn't mean the trials and stuff are not going to be there, Yeah, but it means that God's going to carry the heavier part of it. Because the things that I've walked through, even just in the past three years of my life, I'm like, how do you do this without God? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's things happening. Literally, my phone's going off and I'm like, Mm -hmm. it's okay, Brooke. I mean, it's still happening. That's the thing. Yeah. Oh, even what it took just to get here Mm -hmm. to record this podcast. I'm just like, yeah. 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 But and that's like a whole other topic that we'll get into later because (laughs) there's so many topics. Literally, there's gonna be like topic after topic after topic. And you're going to be like, are they going to shut up? Because... Yeah. What have they not gone through? That's the thing. Yeah. I feel like we need to have like something that we'll talk about. Like, is there anything that we haven't gone through? I, not to not the top I don't of my head, yeah. no. But the whole, you know, the whole to kind of like wrap it up is when you let God like really take control. Not like, oh, I'm gonna pray about this for a few minutes no, and then yeah, I'm still like, gonna try and fix it myself. Yeah. It just, it gets you to a place where it's like, yes, all of these horrible things might be going on around me, but the peace that I have, right? because I know God's got it. Right. And that's what I hope people gain from, from hearing our stories right, yeah. is. This entire thing, that's exactly what the goal is. Yeah. This is not just a venting session so you can hear about all these horrible things that happened to me. This is like- And we're not like that, doing like, it to be like, a, oh, pity, poor Tori and Brooke type of situation. No, this is like, a- This is a- Look what God did. 
Right. Look where we're, where yeah. we are at now, even after going through that and still going through stuff. I mean, like we're still here and you know, mm -hmm. we're strong. I mean, like the stuff that we've been through, I mean, there's some that just, it broke people and there's, they're not here because of what they went through. Yeah. But it, that's not us. I mean, and I'm not saying that in like a bad way that they were like weak or anything like that. It's just, we're here to just bring to light of you can go through like the darkest of darkest times and God is right there with you if you mm -hmm. allow him to be and allow yeah. him to help you through it. Because so, the horrible thing that happens to you is not what defines you. Correct. Romans 8, 28, for I know that all things work together for God's good. Yeah. You know, it's it's one of those things where – no, it doesn't make sense on paper, <laughs> but God, that's, I mean, it's just at the end of the day, it's just, it's, it's God. God is good. Yeah. And, and that is the takeaway from every, every episode that we record is yes, these things happened, but look what God did. Mm -hmm. Look at how he redeemed it. Look at how he yeah. restored it. Like, you know, because in, until you talk about it, like people would never know. No. Cause there's sometimes I'll like say something and people are like, you did not go through that. And I'm like, okay. Uh, okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Didn't go through it, but I literally just told you a yeah. huge lie, but okay. Yep. Yeah. But I, I, you know, I'm excited yeah. for what's to come. Cause I think, and there's a lot to come. So yeah, no content shortage here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>